Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so a lot of you have noticed that depending on where you go for your Halo Infinite benchmark data, the results between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs can be wildly different. Now, this is nothing new, mind you. Benchmark discrepancies between tech sites and YouTube channels is pretty much the norm. But what we're seeing here is a bit more extreme than what we're typically used to seeing. So I wanted to find out why that was. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by the Thermaltake Argent E700 gaming chair. Designed by Studio FA Porsche, the E700 is an ergonomic chair with diverse adjustment options to perfectly support your body. Featuring high quality materials like genuine leather and aluminium, the E700 combines the best of both worlds, gorgeous aesthetics and peak functionality. And it comes in six stunning color options. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so these benchmark discrepancies, as I've put it, is the norm for several reasons. And I boil down to the fact that there's really no universal way to test games. Uh, tech enthusiasts use all different tools, uh, different sections of games, different hardware, and even different software slash firmware. And one of the biggest challenges for us at least is deciding where to test a game like Halo Infinite. Do you test what you believe to be sort of typical performance? So what gamers are you gonna see throughout the game for the most part? Or do you go and find a really demanding section of the game, a section that's really gonna push hardware to its limits, but it may not be something that you see regularly throughout the game. Also, you gotta take into account these judgment calls are very difficult to make without first sinking hundreds of hours into a game using a wide range of hardware. And for obvious reasons, that's just not feasible for us testers. But what we can do is go back and take a second look, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Now, I'm gonna look at data from three other sources, and we're gonna avoid any YouTube drama here. This isn't a call out video. No one here has done anything wrong. It's merely a look at the different ways of testing and how that affects what we're seeing in Halo Infinite. I also highly respect these tech media outlets, and you should too. They put a tremendous amount of work into all of their content. So let's start by taking a look at the computer-based benchmark pass as well as their results. These guys do excellent work and provide highly detailed content. Now their benchmark pass occurs at a later stage of the single player campaign. Here they take roughly a 30 second walk down a trail. It's a very simple pass. There's no explosions, no enemies, just a lovely scenic walk. So right away, this is quite different to the section I used. And as a result, perhaps the results are very different. I'll just show their 1440p numbers for 1080p and 4K and the rest of their testing. Please visit the computer based website. The link to the article can be found in the video description. Now they tested a dozen AMD and Nvidia GPUs, but to keep things simple, let's focus on the 6800 XT and RTX 3080, as they didn't include an RTX 3090 for comparison with the 6900 XT, but this one comparison will work. So at 1440p using the ultra quality preset with async compute enabled, they found that the 6800 XT was a massive 21% faster than the RTX 3080, so certainly a very big win there for the Radeon GPU. That's quite contradictory when compared to our data, which saw the 6800 XT trail the RTX 3080 by a 10% margin. So they have Radeon 21% faster while we have it 10% slower. Then we have another set of results, this time from Kit Guru, who also do excellent work and are, in my opinion, a really underrated source for all things PC tech. And again, I'll link their content in the video description below. Kit Guru tested the exact same section of the game as computer base, which is convenient for us, and we'll look at their 1440p data using the Ultra preset with async compute enabled. The 6800 XT was a massive 18% faster than the RTX 3080, so a very similar performance trend to what was shown by Computerbase. So both Computerbase and KitGuru are in agreement, Radeon GPUs are just much faster for Halo Infinite. But then for another source, we have Game GPU, who are known for testing games exclusively, and do more of this testing than anyone else I've come across. Now, as luck would have it, Game GPU tested the exact same section of the game as me, though their test might be even more demanding. Whereas I simply ran past all the enemies, they engaged lobbing multiple grenades before opening fire. But the takeaway here being that we both tested the exact same section of the game, albeit in slightly different ways. Now, what's really interesting are the results. At 1440p using the same quality settings, Game GPU found the 6800 XT to be 13% slower than the RTX 3080. That's mighty close to the 10% seen in our own data. So we have four different media outlets testing two different sections of the game, and each section leading to very different margins between AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. 
Now, in order to confirm that this is mostly down to where Halo Infinite's being tested, I played on for a bit longer, although I don't have enough time to get to where Computerbase and Guru did their testing, but I did find a similar looking section of the game, and the results are quite conclusive. Okay, so here's my retested data using what is a slightly less demanding section of the game, and the margins are significantly different to what was seen previously, and we'll look at that in a moment. Focusing solely on this graph, we see that the 6900 XT is much faster than the RTX 3090, delivering 17% greater performance. Meanwhile, the 6800 XT is 13% faster than the RTX 3080, and the RX 6800 is 11% faster than the RTX 3070. Now, if we compare the previous data from yesterday's video, which I'll label as test one, and compare that with the less demanding scene, so test two, we have some very interesting findings. Ignoring the 1% low data, we see that the average frame rate for the GeForce GPUs goes almost unchanged. The RTX 3090, for example, was just 2% faster, as was the RTX 3080, and then we see an 8% improvement for the RTX 3070. And this is probably due to the more core-heavy 3080 and 3090 parts hitting an architectural bottleneck. What we see though is a much more radical performance uplift for the Radeon GPUs. The 6900 XT, for example, was a massive 31% faster using the less demanding test scene. The 6800 XT was 27% faster, and the RX 6800, 28% faster. Those are some massive gains, and it's interesting how they only apply to the Radeon GPUs. Moving to 1440p, we find that the Ampere GPUs are better fed with the higher resolution. Again, this is particularly true for the higher core count models. And as a result, the 6900 XT was now just 6% faster than the 3090, while the 6800 XT was 3% faster than the RTX 3080. So not the 18% kit guru reported, nowhere near the 21% we saw from Computerbase, but performance is now trending in AMD's favor. And again, if we compare to the previous test one data with the test two data, we find that at 1440p, the GeForce GPUs saw a seven to 11% performance uplift, depending on which model we're looking at, while the Radeon GPUs on the hand, they were 26 to 29% faster when using the less demanding benchmark pass. Then at 4K, those CUDA cores are all being kept much more busy, and as a result, the RTX 3090 is able to edge ahead of the 1600 XT, but with just a few frames in it. Performance is basically the same, and this is also true when comparing the 6800 XT versus RTX 3080. Comparing the test one data with test two, we find a 14 to 15% increase for the GeForce GPUs, with a more significant 16 to 24% increase for the Radeon GPUs. The 4K margins are far less extreme when compared to what we saw at, say, 1080p, but it still suggests that the Radeon GPUs do better when there aren't enemies firing at you. Finally, another performance influencing feature is resizable bar, and for now we're not testing with this feature enabled by default, largely because no motherboard enables it by default. We've also found that it can deliver mixed results, helping in some games while hindering performance in others. Anyway, I don't really care to argue with AMD fans over whether or not we should test with resizable bar enabled. For now, we're not going to do so, and if you don't like that, well, the good news is there are other media sources like Computerbase who are, so you can visit their website instead if that's more preferable. Speaking of which, Computerbase did test Halo Infinite with resizable bar enabled, so I went back and took a look at how this influenced performance from our original test, so what we believe to be the more demanding test scene. Now, I should note that I haven't modified anything within the display drivers for either the AMD or NVIDIA GPUs. I simply enabled rebar in the BIOS of our X570 motherboard in our Ryzen 9 5950X test system and then reran the benchmarks. What I found was zero change for the GeForce GPUs, but a 6 to 13% increase for the Radeon GPUs at 1440p. The gains were even larger at 1080p and then a little less significant at 4K. In the case of the 6900 XT, we found a 13% performance boost with rebar enabled. So if you were to couple that gain with the 29% increase we found when testing the less demanding section of the game, that is a truly massive performance increase for the flagship Radeon GPU. So I feel as though that testing is conclusive evidence that clearly shows why we're seeing such a large difference in results between different media outlets. It was very convenient that Computerbase and Kit Guru chose to test the same section of the game, pure luck I'm sure, as was the case with us here at Harbour Unboxed and GameGPU, who also tested the same section of the game, again, by pure coincidence. Obviously, we both felt this was a very demanding section of the game that we could practically test. As for who is wrong and who is right, this video really isn't about that, and frankly, I don't care to have that conversation. 
I've gone and tested the section that I have for reasons that made sense to me, while others will test different sections for their own reasons. As long as all GPUs were tested and compared under the same conditions, then the data is valid in my opinion. Ideally, we'd all love to provide detailed benchmarks looking at several different sections of the game, and while we could do that, it would only be done with a few graphics cards, and at that point you're making very different content. Likewise, we'd love to test all these graphics cards with and without features such as resizable bar enabled, with different quality settings, different hardware configurations, you know, different CPUs, all that sort of stuff. But when you're talking about a 30 plus GPU benchmark, it's simply not possible to run that many benchmarks for a single game, especially you know, if we want to see a return on our investment and if you want to see the content released in a relevant time frame. And that is going to do it for this investigation into what is going on with Halo Infinite benchmark results. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, then please do hit the like button. Uh, you can subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to support the work we do at Hiram Box, then we do have Float Plane and Patreon. Links for those are in the video description. And also don't forget to check out Kit Guru, Computer Base, and Game GPU. I'll put the links for their content in the video description because, like us, they've put a heap of work into that. But yeah. Like I said, float plane Patreon if you want to support the channel, get some cool perks in return. We have a Discord server. Tim and I get together and do live streams. No doubt we'll be talking a bit about Halo this month. Q&As, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.